we should say thank you. Thank right? you, Lord. Hallelujah. I thank you this morning because he enabled me to get up and get out here. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
Bible says the effectual, fervent and effectual prayers of the righteous right. availeth much. So I yeah. thank you and I ask you that you continue to pray for her with her, with us, and believe that uh, God will give an answer, that he'll turn some yeah. things around, that he'll get her back where she needs to be. The scary thing is the same pains that she's feeling have lost two a minister and a deacon having the same pains, went in the hospital for surgery and never came home. And so every day I'm praying and asking God to not allow it to happen again, it was so close to home. So I appreciate your prayers, amen, and I just thank God for what he has yet to do, amen. We want to thank God for your position this morning, amen. amen. It's singers and everything, we want to thank God for you. Amen. Real quickly, if you can, I just want to share something with you from the Gospel according to Luke. You can meet me over in Luke chapter number 19. Luke chapter number 19. And then I ask you guys, as you're getting there, continue to be in prayer with us. The Gardner prays. We go into a new building today. And, uh, the address, make sure that everybody has it. Uh, but if you got a pen, you can write it down. 530 West Alondra in the city of Compton. 530 West Alondra. Amen. In the city of Compton. So meet us over in the Gospel according to Luke, chapter number 19. And we're going to begin at verse number 28. Amen. And the word of God says, when he had said this, he went on ahead going up to Jerusalem. And it came to pass when he drew near to Bethage and Bethany at the mountain called Olivet, that he sent two of his disciples. Verse number 30 says, saying, go into the village opposite you, where, whereas you enter, you will find a coat tied, on which no one has ever sat. Loose it and bring it here. Verse 31 says, and if anyone asks you, why are you loosening it? Thus you shall say to him, because the Lord has need of it. Verse 20, 32 says, so, they, so those who were sent went their way and found it just as he had said to them. But as they were loosening the coat, the owners of it said to them, why are you loosening the coat? There's verse 34 says, and they said, the Lord has need of him. Then they brought him to Jesus and they threw their own clothes on the coat and they set Jesus on him. And verse 36 says, And as he went, many spread their clothes on the road. If I can for a minute, I just want to use the subject, Embracing Our Victory. Look at your neighbor and say, Neighbor, neighbor. did you know that we were victorious? Did you know that we were victorious? Amen. Take your seats. Take your seats. Oh, matchless God, we thank you for this opportunity to share. We ask you, oh God, that you bless every word that proceedeth out of my mouth, knowing, Father, that it's all of you and none of me. So I ask you, God, to decrease me and you increase. Anoint these lips of clay, that, Father God, when they hear, they don't hear me, but they hear you. When they see, they don't see me, but they see you. We thank you, oh God, and we give your name, praise, honor, and glory in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 As we as we are here in this Palm Sunday, 2022, we find, and I'm just going to speak for myself. I find that um, I go year after year with Palm Sunday, and I, I recognize how it's not much emphasis on Palm Sunday as much as it is on Easter Sunday. And I want us to understand that Palm Sunday set it up for Easter Sunday. Amen. Have we got a witness? Yes. But there's some things in Palm Sunday 
that actually put a big light on Easter Sunday. Because if some things had not been put in place Palm Sunday and the week leading up to the time that he was about to die for us, then I don't know if our understanding would have been where it is today. Amen? Amen. So we find here that as he's preparing, and we know that this is what they call Holy Week. This week is what it's been considered Holy Week. Starting on today, as we know today being Palm Sunday was a great event with Jesus himself riding into Jerusalem. Right. Now, God witness, his ministry that he had been doing since he had been here was now coming to where the purpose by which he was sent here for was about to be fulfilled. Have I got a witness? And this is what I want you to know and understand that all of us have a purpose. Amen. And if we can set our minds on how Jesus' was, we may not know the day or the hour when we're going to come, but if we can always prepare ourselves that no matter how we ride, make sure we ride victoriously. Amen. Have I got a witness? Amen. And your victorious ride has nothing to do with how strong and mighty you are. But it does have something to do with how much Jesus you have on the inside of you. Amen. And as we begin to look at this particular story, we find that Jesus set some things up because, because he knew that his triumphant ride into would set the tone, not just for what was about to happen, but it was to set the tone for the minds of those that still didn't believe. Amen. Have we got a witness? So when we look at this, we find out that they were speaking of, were speaking of Palm Sunday. Mm -hmm. So with that, we, we need to understand the symbolism for the thing called the palm. And the amazing thing is I had some and I was going to bring them and I forgot to bring them. But if we look at the story, we find out that it spoke about the palms. And it spoke in the story about how when he rode in, people were waving the palms and and how he rode in and had some on the road. Well, we need to understand what the palms symbolize. Mm. The palm itself was a symbol of victory. Mm. The palm itself was a symbol of victory. And as Jesus was preparing for his death, he was also allowing for us to embrace the victory over what was to come, which was his death. Now, isn't it amazing that when they began to wave the palms like this, all they were doing was waving a sign and a signal that we were, we were victorious. We were victorious. We were, we were waving the signs that we were victorious. And, and this is amazing because, because Jesus already knew what he was coming to do. But yet he set the tone for us to understand that death didn't have the power to keep him. But we were victorious over everything that has been set in front of us to beset us. Mm. We have the power and the victory over it, but we've got to maintain and do the things that Jesus did. Mm. Have we got a witness? Yes, if we look at verse number 30, we watch what begins to happen. Jesus now begins to speak to his disciples, Josh, and he tells his disciples as he's preparing to go in. Because I want you to watch this. Not even his disciples, even though they walked with him, even though they saw all the miraculous things that he did, there were still some that wasn't quite all the way here yet. There were still some that still didn't understand the magnitude of who Jesus was, let alone the power behind what he was about to do. Mm -hmm. Amen, somebody. And there are still people here today, mother, that don't seem to embrace who Jesus is because if he doesn't do something super miraculous for you, you're still on the fence wondering if he is who he said he is. Amen. Well, I come by to tell you that I like this little part in verse number 30 because he sends the disciples out to do something that he saw that they hadn't saw. That being said, I want you to understand when Jesus sends you somewhere, he already sees the end before he even allows you to see the beginning. Amen. Amen. I wish I had a witness in here. And verse number 30 says, saying going into the village opposite of you, whereas you enter, you will find a coat tied on which no one has ever sat. Amen. Now, now watch this. 
The difference in between Jesus riding in on a horse and riding in on a colt was rather, rather significant. Hmm. Because had he rode in on a horse, Bob, he would have rode in in a way of him being a conqueror, more or less like, hey, I'm in here, this war status. He would have given them the illusion that he was coming in as this mighty king and, and, he, was, and, and he was coming in to conquer some stuff. But with him riding in on the donkey, it was allowing them to understand that he was riding in in peace. Amen. He was riding in to set a tone of peacefulness. He wasn't riding in to create any kind of havoc. Because remember, they were looking for a king, but they had no idea the magnitude of the king that was coming. Have I got a witness here? Yeah. But he rode in on a donkey. And if you look in the Old Testament, you will find out that any time uh, uh, men of stature were coming in in a peaceful move, they came in on donkeys. Yeah. We, we, we always have the donkey getting the bad rap. But mother, if you look, some of the most wealthiest men in the Bible, Old and New Testament, had herds of donkeys. Yeah. And so now I want you to listen. Not only did Jesus ride in, not on a horse, but on a donkey. He didn't come in on a donkey, but he came in on a coat. Amen. Not only did he come in on a coat, Josh, but he came in on a coat that ain't nobody ever sat on, let alone rode. So in this purest state, Jesus comes in in a peaceful, triumphant ride, riding on something that had never, ever been sat on. So in other words, he came in as pure as he can, Riding in on the purest thing that he could find. And listen, he set it up before he even said anything because he understood what needed to take place in order that God got the glory, in order that people will understand, in order that his purpose had been fulfilled. Can I share something with somebody? Stop avoiding the hell that you're going through because some of it is necessary for your purpose to be fulfilled. Amen. <laughs> some of us is trying to get out of a bad situation you didn't put yourself in the bad all the time, sometimes we do <laughs> but we don't always put ourselves in bad situations so therefore if you didn't have the power to put yourself in it you sure don't have the power to get yourself out of it, but you do have the power to say, if God be for me yeah. yes. you do have the power to say he said that he'll never leave me nor forsake me, yeah. I do have the power that says, now is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of, I have the power to say this too shall pass but I do have the power to say no matter how hellish it is peace be still I have the power to do that why? every once in a while I gotta put a makeshift palm in my hand and when hell break loose I got to start waving to remind hell that I'm victorious amen amen I wish I had somebody in here. Now, we don't have the propensity to ride in mother on donkeys. At least I hope ain't nobody riding around here on a donkey. But we don't have the propensity to be riding in to our situations on a donkey. But I need you to understand, you can ride in on the power of the Holy Ghost. If you ride in with the right mentality, with the right attitude, if you ride in with your mind stayed on Jesus, then your atmosphere will understand that you're coming in peace and you're not coming to create no problems. Hallelujah. Some of us approach our situations with this mentality that I'm going to get you before you get me. But I need you to understand that the Bible declares that if you hold your peace, and let the Lord fight your battles. All you got to do is ride in on the donkey of peace. Ride in on the donkey of love. Ride in on the donkey of power. And watch God. Mm -hmm. So God, Jesus set it up. And he told them, he said, not only did he tell them, watch this. Not only did he tell them where the coat was. We're looking in Luke's version of it. But if you look in Matthew's version of it, Matthew says that they went in and it was a donkey and a coat. Ooh. And when Matthew says, he said, don't pass the donkey to get the coat. He said, matter of fact, I'm tying both to bring them to me. Hallelujah. In that phase, I want to look at, don't separate the coat from its mama yet. Mm. But yet bring its mama with them so the coat still got some identity of comfortability. Have I got a witness? Because if you take a baby from its mama too soon, that baby ain't going to adjust to the atmosphere too soon. Amen. 
Amen. So now we find that Jesus comes in and he has this coat coming to him. And I need you to understand that if we reference that, we can reference that as being prophecy that was being fulfilled. Because in Nehemiah 9 and 9, I'm sorry, it's in Nehemiah and Zechariah. It, not in not in Zechariah. It says, how, which says, rejoice greatly, O daughters of Zion. Shout, O daughters of Jerusalem, behold, your king is coming to you. He is just and having salvation, lowly and riding on a donkey, a coat, the fowl of a donkey. Mm -hmm. And when he says he's coming in lowly, see, because our reference is always thinking that a, that a donkey is, is, is the lowest pieces, because in some scriptures, and we shared this a few weeks ago, the, about the donkey, and, and, and they have some things where they symbolize with the Samaritans or with the, when, the, when, the, when the young men were outside of the gate and they had the leprosy. Uh -huh. And when you begin to research that, it says that, that, that the famine was going to last mm. so bad. It was going to be so long. It said it would have been so long that people would have been selling the head of the donkey Amen. or eating it. That was a symbol of something being lowly. But in this, it wasn't speaking of the donkey being lowly. But it was speaking of how Jesus humbled himself mm. to come into a place in a position that was going to let everybody gain from it if you can tap in to who he was and what he was about to do. Amen. Amen. So I got a witness. And that's the reason why it's so important that when the Holy Spirit comes into the house of God and you feel his presence, that's why it's so important to wave your palms. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. <laughs> Yes, yeah. You may not have the ones off the tree, but you got the ones that are connected to your hands. And it's all right to wait your palms. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Because when the Holy Ghost comes in, I need you to understand that the enemy ain't far away because he don't want you to grasp what God is in the house attempting to do. Amen. Your healing is in the house, and when God comes, that's when your healing can be manifested. Your deliverance is in the house, but if the enemy is sitting outside and can distract you for a few minutes because you don't have the propensity to weigh your victorious palms. Amen. Amen. You set yourself up for things to happen. Mm -hmm. We look at this coat, we find this coat had never been ridden. And I don't know if you know anything about being cowboys, but there are some horses that you can ride right away and there's other horses you got to break yes, before you ride yes, and I don't know if this donkey and I believe most donkeys you can't just ride yes, but the donkeys have to be broken in order for you to ride yes, but Jesus in his infiniteness and in his power and his splendor and his majesty he said go get it he wasn't worried about breaking it because the power of the Holy Ghost will break anything that it needs to be broken in order to let the king of glory Look at your neighbor and say, God got that kind of power. Yes, sir. You find that this pure coat. And then look at it too. Look at this. We look at it as being a coat and not a full donkey. So if it's a coat, it does not necessarily say that the coat had enough strength to carry a full-sized man. But I need you to know when the power of the Holy Ghost comes, the littlest things have the greatest power when it's mixed in with who Jesus is. So I know when people began to look at him, uh, Brother Brian, they couldn't help but to say, this has to be the king of glory. Mm. This has to be him high and lifted up. This has to be the one that everyone is speaking of. This has to be the one that has come from heaven down here to save this sin sick world. This has to be somebody that's different than anybody we've ever seen. Yes. He said he came in riding on a coat. He came in, verse number 31 said, and if anyone asked mm. why you loosed it, he says, you tell him because the Lord has need of it. He's saying this in a time where people were still on the fence and believing that he was who he said he was. Mm. But yet and still, watch this, when you can proclaim out of your mouth what Jesus has, what God has dropped in your spirit, and you open it up your mouth in the full, full, full authority of who God is. God sets the atmosphere so that no matter what somebody wants to do, they can't do nothing other than what the Holy Ghost says is going to do. I wish I had somebody. Josh, it's kind of like one of these things right here. 
if I said that, that, that my money at the end of the month is shorter than my bills, but I know that God will supply my need out of my mouth, it will be God will supply all of my needs according to his riches. And because of my faith and believing that he will, I set the tone in the atmosphere. So before the end of the month comes, the atmosphere has got to obey what came out of my mouth. Not because of I said it, but because of the power of God that works in me and the faith that I have to believe that he can based off of how he's done it over and over and over again. And at the end of the month, the end of the months meet the power of the Holy Ghost. And if the money don't come, it seems as if the, the call stops. Because God says, if I'll fix it, if I set it, I'll settle it. That's it. So I've got to profess it out of my mouth, not based off of what I'm hoping, but based off of what I believe and who I believe in. And Jesus being all spirit and all man, he already knew. So when he professed, Yes. If somebody asked you, knowing himself that somebody was going to ask you. Amen. Oh, right. Amen. Right. Ain't that something? He already knew, but because of the folks that he sent, they wasn't going to know. He has to set it up so that they understand. Now watch this. So when they went in and they untied the coat, and the man asked them, why are you untying the coat? I know they responded right away, but I believe when they was walking the coat to Jesus, they were saying, hold on a minute. Amen, amen. How, how he know that they was going to ask me about why I untied this thing? And how do they know what Lord I'm talking about? Amen, amen. Because you got to remember in those days, they didn't always praise the name of Jesus. But they had their own gods that they worshipped. They had their own form of lords that they idolized. But ain't it amazing that when God gives you directives mm. and you seem to speak it out of your mouth, mm -hmm. ain't it amazing that he's already put the certain power in you so the tone that comes out of your mouth resonates and it causes whatever could have happened not to happen because he wanted to make sure that what he set forth does happen. Amen. And I like what you said, Mother, when you were sitting here. You said that everything that God showed you, Bishop, preached it yesterday. Amen. And I need you to catch this. This was the same situation when Jesus told them, if he asked you, uh, uh, he said if he asked you. So Jesus already knew they were going to be asked. Yeah. So therefore, he gave them how to deal with being asked, yeah. just like you may have asked God, what does this mean? And he let Bishop preach to you, word for word, to explain to you, you're not tripping. It's not mere coincidence. You're not just, your mind is not going crazy. But not only did I give you what I wanted you to have, but I set the atmosphere for you to know it's me. Yeah, that's, that's, that, that's how God is. We call it confirmation today. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Have I got a witness? Yes, because when God tells us something, every once in a while, Josh, we'd be like, uh, uh. And then God will send somebody to, to confirm what he says. Yes, and sometimes it'll be word for word. Uh -huh. But the part that cracks me up is when he allows somebody that's devilish as all out devil yes, sir, yes. come up and give you a confirmated word and you know that it had to be God because that person don't speak no goodness out of their mouth. No way. But when God allows for the word to be confirmed, uh -huh. it's confirmed. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Don't matter what happens. Amen. Don't, don't matter what happens. And so now we find that he giving them the word and they went into the city and then what began to happen, everything that Jesus spoke, it happened because they went in and they saw the coat just where he said it. They went in and untied it. And the, the, and the man asked them, what are you doing? Just like he said. And then when they told him, he says, the Lord needed him. And they said, okay, go ahead. And just like he said. And then when they brought him, listen, but now they were at a state of humility because the Bible says that they took their own clothes. Mm, hallelujah. And draped it over this pure coat. Yes. And I need you to know, watch this, because when you understand royalty, you, 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 you know you can't do nothing raggedy when it's supposed to be royal. And I don't know about you, but if this is the king of glory, high and lifted up, then yes, the coat is pure, but he still needs to have something on the coat to protect the, pure, the purity of who God is. Hallelujah. Not, not that their clothes was going to separate anything, because I need you to know that anything wet can go through the clothes, anything dirty can go through the clothes, but it was just a symbol 
It was just a symbol. Amen. Remember, they rode bareback with everything down there. They didn't have saddles back in those days. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. But Jesus was not riding on the bare back of the coat, but rather they put their clothes on the coat and then set Jesus on top of the clothes that sat on top of the coat. Come on, Jesus, right? And then when the Bible says when he began to ride into the city, mm -hmm. he says that people began to take off their coats and wave them or throw them on the ground so that royalty can proceed in. Hallelujah. And every so once in a while, you got to take off your stuff and throw it on the floor. So when the King of Glory comes in the room, he got something to roll in here on. And if you can allow him to know, watch this, because in my mind, this is just me. I'm not telling you that this is something I found in the Bible. This is just me. But if I lay mother my burdens down and Jesus rides up in here, I find out if he steps on my burden. My burdens are under his feet, and his feet is connected to his power. And if he can step on what I'm going through, then I believe he can stomp it out, and I ain't got to deal with it no more. But if I can lay it down, be submissive, and lay it down, if I can wave my palms to acknowledge I know who he is, and I'm grateful for his presence, the Bible says that they laid down their clothes as he came in for him to walk on. But there were people that had palms that was raising, waving the palms, which symbolized what? Victory. And I need you to know, not only was they waving, and not only did they drop their clothes, but the Bible says that they began to sing the song Hosanna. And I need y'all to know when they called out the name of Hosanna, they were calling it out to represent or to acknowledge the authority of who he was. But as I was doing some of my research, mother, what I found out simply was this. There were, there were priests that were in the temple, Pastor West, that were praising at the same time, Psalms 24. They were in there talking about, here, here comes the king, high and lifted up. But yet in their mind, they had no idea what king they were talking about. But ain't it amazing that as they were lifting up a praise, he was walking into the city. Hallelujah. And if I had somebody that caught that right there, I need you to know that when you lift up a praise in the house of the Lord, then you can acknowledge the fact and recognize the fact that while you're lifting up a praise, he's yet entering into the building. And if you don't know, like I know, if you don't know for yourself, I need you to know that Jesus will respond to your praise. He will respond to your hallelujah. He will respond to your hosanna. He will respond to your palms waving. And when he walks in the room, the power of God comes in to shift things that needs to be shifted. Set in place things that need to be set in place. It needs to put in order where it needs to be put in order. But at the end of the day, no matter what happens, when he walks in the room, all glory goes to him, whether you want to give it to him or not. I just challenge somebody to begin to wave your palms of victory. Prophecy had been set forth. Mm -hmm. Then we look down in verse number 36 and it says, As he, and as he went, many spread their clothes on the road. There were people that did not believe that was watching. <laughs> but I want you to understand that any place you searched in the Bible, there was always people that showed up that didn't really <laughs> believe in what they were seeing, but yet they wanted to be a part of of what was going on. Amen. I, I believe, Josh, we like that today. Because I come by to tell you that on your way home, Pop, if you're driving down the street on your way home and you see fire engines and lights and smoke coming six blocks out your way, yes. most color folk drive out their way to see what's happening and ain't got nothing to do with them because you just knows it and you want to know what's going on. Amen. Have I got a witness? But I double dog dare you to have that same nosy ability when the king of glory comes into the house of the Lord. I, I need you to act like fire engine lights was going and smoke was all over the place and, and the police and the ambulances was everywhere. And I need you to be just as focused and have just as much attention because he's coming in to set order. He's coming in to allow you to know. I am the king of glory. High and lifted up. I am Hosanna. I am the King of Kings. I am the Lord of Lords. I do have all power in my hand. All hail to the King. Oh, come on here, when he comes into the room, I need y'all to 
know you got to give in your undivided attention. And there are some people in here that come to church and ain't connected to church. But if the folks that know who he is would just wave your palms of victory. And when the King of Glory walks in the room, I come by to encourage you that even those that don't necessarily know him will be nosy enough to check out who he is and to find out why we're waving so much, why we're throwing our clothes down on the road. I need y'all to understand that Shakespeare, he got throwing the robe, uh, the coat over the mud. He got that from the Bible. I wish I had a witness because had they not rolled in on the folks' clothes, then Shakespeare would have never thought, this is how I can honor a woman. I can make sure that she walks across this dirt on pure ground without getting herself dirty. And I don't know if the people of the city was worried about him riding in on a dirty road, but they were concerned with him riding in with all power which he represented. And I want somebody to know that your praise and the wave of your palms have the ability to set the same tone as if you laid your stuff down in the road. Have I got a witness in here? And now every time, Chantel, that you look at a palm tree and you think about that palm tree when the winds start blowing real hard, it'll bend, but it will not break. When the Santa Ana winds begin to blow, you will see the palms begin to wave and they're letting you know that we're victorious. I want somebody, Josh, to look at the palm tree when it begin to wave and you lift up your voice and say, oh, hell, to the King of Glory. Just sing that song, Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna. Yeah, because God is not just in the church, but God is He's on the beach. He's in your city. He's on your street. He deserves the praise. Not just in the church, but in your car. The reminder is the palm tree. Don't let the palm tree outweigh you with the Lord. But let the palm tree remind you I got palms too. And I'll wave them. Not just in the good times, but I'll wave them. Not just in the bad times, and I'll wave them. Not just in between times, but just like David, I'll bless the Lord at all times. And his praise shall continually be in my mouth. Why you 
sitting there and ain't nobody saying nothing. Yeah. So that you can recognize when he walks in the room that he's already answered your question. Yeah. Have I got a witness in here? Yeah. And what the problem is with us is we don't want to embrace our victory. Yeah. But I need you to know that as Jesus came in, even those that did not believe had to recognize that was something different about this person. Because if I'm in a room with a thousand people and 800 of them is talking about the same thing, I think I'm going to follow the eight and not the two. Because I stand a better chance going with the masses in something that I can't explain that seems to be beneficial. Then I can't hang it out with the 200 because I just don't want to believe. Come on up and hear somebody. And then when Jesus began his journey through the week, if you read the story, you find out that even the, the disciples that were right there with him on this particular Palm Sunday, they were the same ones that he says, I got to go, Pop, and I got to pray. I need y'all to stay here and watch God as I pray. They still hadn't got it yet, Josh, because he went to pray for a little while and came back and found them boogers laying there sleeping. He said, y'all can't stay up just for a few minutes. And I need y'all to know right here, God wants you to recognize and be comfortable in who he is. But he don't want you to be so comfortable that you miss your assignment. Because just because he's with you don't mean that you don't have a part that you got to do too. In the part with the coat, he had a couple of disciples that had to go and fetch the coat. But now in his prayer, he had some disciples that were supposed to just pray. Even though the assignment was fulfilled, I need you to understand that he allowed us to see this. You've got to be ye ready at all times. And I believe if the disciples hadn't got so comfortable with knowing that he was who he says he was, but rather allow their palms. Uh, have you ever noticed when you read the Bible late at night, you seem to start getting sleepy? Because uh, the enemy don't want you to get the power from within. But I dare you to start waving your palms at the moment you get sleepy. Because the power from on heaven will give you a little bit more juice. Because at the time you get sleepy, is the confirming word that God wanted to give you that was going to help you feel better in your sleep. So practice waving your palms, somebody. Practice waving your palms. Because there's power in your way. Embrace your victory. Let Jesus ride in on your circumstances. And you start singing Hosanna. You start singing all hate. You start letting folks that don't believe start understanding. Bye-bye, he says, If he be lifted up, he'll draw you. Because my job ain't to draw you. But my job is to lift him. And what better way to lift him than to wave my palms. Because I think about what he's brought me from. Have I got a witness? I think about the things he's brought me through. Have I got a witness? I think about the times when, in my mind, I shouldn't have been here. But he said, no, 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 no. You still got work to do. Uh, he deserves my weight. He deserves my praise. Because when he rode in to set the tone for the Holy Week, the Bible says that at the end of the week is when he got that old rugged cross after being beaten with and the crown of thorns on his head. <laughs> the Bible said, I feel my back is coming. Because the Bible says that they put him in a place where they twisted a crown of thorns on his head. And they tell me that they whipped him all day and all night long. And they tell me that they made him carry that old rugged cross up to a hill called Gaga. And they tell me that they took some old rusted nails and drove him in in his feet. And they tell me that they took some nails and drove them in his hands. They tell me that it was real hot out there. 
that how much more can you gain in a day? Or, or how much can you add to your life worrying? Yes. Hmm. The moment something gets too hard for you to deal with in yourself, it's all right to lift your heart. All right, all right. Come on, somebody. All right. Watch this. But if you begin to wave your palms when everything is good, mm -hmm. you can store up enough victory yes. to when it's hard to raise them when it's bad. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Because Josh, it don't do you no good to have an ATM card mm -hmm. if you ain't got nothing to get out of yeah. 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 So let all these waves right now be your deposit. Yeah. So at the time that you need it the most, yes, sir. even if you can't wait, you can just turn it up. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. Amen. God can give you Amen. what you need out of Amen. the ATM right. right. Jesus did it for us. Hallelujah. He did it so that we wouldn't enjoy a good story, mm -hmm. but that we would utilize what he set in place. Amen. He even let us know, I'm going through this week of hell the way I'm going through it. So you'll never have to go through hell like this All right now. ever again. All right All right now. Because remember when Jesus died, punishments were no longer the same. Hmm. And I like to reference this. Before Jesus died on the cross, they were just hanging people on sticks and Amen. trees. Yeah. But ain't it amazing that when he died, they took two posts, yes, Lord. Mm. Yes, made them as a cross, Amen. Yes, Lord. which gave the cross significance. We wear them every day. Amen. We wear them all the time. Yes, Lord. And not understand mm. what they really signify. Because this had no meaning until he died on it. All right, Amen. Now. Amen. And I heard a preacher tell me one day, and I don't know if this will help anybody. He says, it's all right when you wear the cross that has Jesus on it. Okay. He says, but I don't wear the cross <coughs> with Jesus on it because he ain't on it no more. Okay. Amen. Amen. All right. Amen. All right. Amen. Amen. All right. He says, if I believe that he came down and he rose again, mm -hmm. then I'm not going to wear that's right. something that says he's still there. Amen. Amen. Because then that voids the power that he says I have. Mm. All right. Have I got a witness? Yes, yes, Lord. And when he said that, that resonated in my spirit. Mm. And then any time I'm looking at nice little cross charms, yeah. he said, oh, this is nice. I said, he sure is, but Jesus is still there. All right, all right, yeah. You don't like Jesus? I said, I love yeah. Jesus. Ha, ha. But he's not on the cross anymore. All right, now. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. So I say all that to say this. He did it for us. Yes, he yes. did. So don't let our minds and our actions stay in the before he died. Yes. And even in this week, if you go and research this, you will find out when you read this, there was something different happened every day from today mm. to next Sunday. All right, all right. All right. And there are some religions that were actually in Holy Week more yes, yes, than Lord. anything. Yes, mm. Because he loves us so much. Yes, he yes. does. Our job is to love each other so much. Yes, mm. And that's the reason why I, I ask us <laughs> at the end of service to look at somebody and tell them, I love you. I love you. And there's yes. nothing you can do around that. When I know somebody loves me for me, I love what I can do for them. It helps me through bad situations because yes. I know I'm loved somewhere. Yes. Without witness. Amen. I love you, Josh. All right. Ain't nothing you can do about it. Nothing you can do about it. Amen. Amen. Mike and I, I'll I stop loving mean. you if you go fishing again with us. <laughs> <laughs> Cedar Grove, mm -hmm. Cornerstone. I love y'all. Love you too. And nothing you can do about it. All right now. I'm not a perfect person. Yeah. I have flaws. Yeah. I get busy, I forget. No. I'm oh. a work in progress. Yes, yes. Oh, Lord. But I still love genuinely. Oh, Amen. Amen. And I have enough in me, enough love in me to say if I offended anybody mm -hmm. with anything, yes. I'm sorry. Yes. Because yes. it's never my intention. Yes, Lord. My intention is to love you. Yes. The way God loves us. Yes, Lord. And if I got something wrong, tell me because I don't have yes. the power of making it right. All right, now. Mm -hmm. Because All the right. more God you see in me, mm -hmm. the more yes. God you're going to have a problem with letting right. other folks see in you. All right, now. Amen. Yes, Amen. Lord. I just want us to practice one thing and see the road. Mm. 
I want us to let our palms wave. Because it symbolizes peace yes. and it symbolizes victory. Amen. In the name of Jesus. With all eyes closed, all heads bowed. Oh God, we thank you. We magnify and glorify your holy name. For you alone are worthy. We thank you, oh God, for what you've done. How you set the tone for Holy Week and how you withstood all that went on throughout the week and how you got all the way to Friday and took the brutal beating that you did and how you hung up there on that cross how you stayed in the grave but then how you got up with all heart we want to say thank you thank you we thank you God even now for looking beyond our faults and seeing our needs now I ask you God to give us a gentle reminder that we don't have to go climb a tree to pull off palms. We don't have to go downtown LA to buy palms. But yes. you've given us palms. Right. And our palms have the same effect as the palms that you allow to be on the tree. Yes. So remind us, God, to wave our palms. Yes. Remind us, oh God, that when you walk into the room, you deserve the Hosanna. Yes. You deserve the all hail to the king. You deserve to be high yes, and lifted yes, up. Yes, so we want to say thank you. Thank, thank you, Lord. I ask, oh God, for a special blessing for everyone under the sound of my voice. Yes, that before this week ends, mm. that you will manifest yourself to them in a way they've never, ever seen or noticed before. Yes, that you'll show them something about you, God, that they need to shift them mm. to the next level in their lives. I'm asking God that you put something in the hearts of someone here that they may share with a co-worker this week that may get interested in knowing about what you did for us. Hallelujah. The sin sick world. Hmm. That you said, I'm taking on the sins of the world. I'm nailing them to the cross. Put them in the grave with me. And from there, you have the opportunity to do it right. Yes, Lord. Let your light so shine from within us, God, that all the world may see our good and perfect works that mm -hmm. you have yes. set before us. And want to glorify your name. Yes, Lord. We love you, God. Yes, Lord. We love you. Yes, Lord. I'm asking God that you touch the heart of everyone here and every family that's represented. And then I'm asking you, God, that if there's someone under the sound of my voice that needs healing in their body, that need you to interject in a certain situation. Direct them to wave their palms and allow them to feel you come in and set order. Hallelujah. And we thank you for it. Thank you, Lord. With all heads bowed, continue to be bowed and eyes closed, this is a time where someone may want to accept Christ for the first time or rededicate your life. And as we don't need to open the doors because the doors of the church will never close. We want to extend that invitation to you to either accept Christ for the first time or rededicate your life. And if that's you, just simply raise your hand where you are. Amen. And then you may have a need to want to join a church. And if this is the church that you like to join, we have two churches represented here. And they have two separate names, but they're one church. Fellowship together, work together, serve together. Because we understand that God is not interested in individuality only. But he knows that corporate settings help to build our individual selves. And so we thank God for double portion of building. And if you'd like to join church, just simply raise your hand where you are. Amen. As we see that there's none, but there's still yet more at the cross. God, we thank you. Thank you. God, we praise your name. Yes. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Let us prepare.